Good morning brothers and sisters and welcome to the Sabbath day on the, let's have a look, it's the 17th of the second month, February 2024. Uh, we're at Kyle's home today and uh, I'm going to start off with a prayer and then Kyle's going to share something from his Bible. Uh, we're both Knights Templars and uh, Kyle wanted to share this from his Bible because the Bible is important to us as knights and soldiers of Christ and poor fellows. Thank you, my Lord. So let us say a prayer first to invite the Spirit, and I should do that. Loving Creator God, we thank you for this day that we can come and enjoy the Sabbath and we invite you to be with us all over the world that we can share in this sacrament, Lord. We thank you for your gift to us, Jesus Christ, and we ask that you will be with us in all we do this week. And I say these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, over to Kyle. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I would like to do something slightly different this morning. It is from the Holy Bible, and it is, of course, the Blessed Sacrament. I would like to read to you. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshipping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. As at this time we remember our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And whilst they were at supper, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke and gave to his disciples and said, Take ye and eat, this is my body. Then, brothers and sisters, he said, And taking the chalice, he gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which shall be shed for many unto remission of sins. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, as knights templars, that's how we take our sacrament. But in the um, Mormonism faith, we have the two prayers. Uh, but I'm going to leave it at that today. We're going to do the sacrament that way today, which I think will be different for us all. And it was taken directly from Holy Bible. And it was taken directly from the Bible. Sean, brothers and sisters, for this week's Sabbath service, I want to start off by reading a scripture, 1 John 5, 13 through 15. These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. This week's message is based on an article written by a brother from Australia by the name of Matthew, and there'll be a link to his article in the, in the description below. It's a very, very good read, talking about the reality that Satan, the accuser, tries to, manipulating us, to manipulate us into thinking that we're not good enough for God. 
that God doesn't love us where we are. And I, I just want to read the opening sentence here because he says it perfectly. I can't say it better than this. If we believe that we are bad people or that we can't change or it's too late to change, or if we think we have sinned too many times and are far away from God, then I just want to tell you that you believe totally wrong. If you believe any of those things, then please understand that those beliefs and feelings are from Satan, who is the great accuser. I've talked before about the fact that I believe that Satan tried to tell three great lies. That God doesn't exist. That he doesn't exist. That Satan doesn't exist. Or that evil doesn't exist. And that you're not good enough. Those to me are the three greatest lies that we're told. You are good enough. And I could really end the video right there. There's really nothing more to be said. Unfortunately, we live in a world where people use fear as a crutch to try to get people to flow into their churches, to follow various religious ideas. I mean, I, I'm going to tell you point blank. I, I grew up in an area where it was all fire and brimstone. I've told you before about the fact that some of my teachers and the people that would sub at the public school I went to would, you know, every so often say, hey, everybody, unless you repent, you're all going to go to hell, just like that Mormon boy over there pointing at me. And, and fear doesn't really work. When I was doing my tour of churches, when I didn't serve a message, uh, mission when I was younger for the Brighamite Church, the Salt Lake City Church, I remember talking to this girl, and you know they did altar call. The preacher would try to you know get up the fire of brimstone and get people to come up to give their their life to Jesus. And there was this one girl that I I went to school with. I recognized her, and she came up and she cried one Sunday. And I said, "Oh wow, she really turned her life around." And she said, the, the person I was with said. No, she does it every so often. She comes to church because it's a holiday or what have you, and then she gets all emotional, and she goes up to the altar and repents, but then she doesn't come back until the next holiday. It's just it's just an in-the-moment thing. And and that's the reality of, of using fear. And, and I'll tell you also, there was a – I was in the, the missionary, a stake missionary at one point, and in the small town where I was raised, there was a missionary that – that was kind of an area where they would send missionaries. Like, I don't really know, know what to do with you. I can't send you home. So I'm going to send you out here to this rural community and, and, and just pretend like you don't exist. Well, this guy was baptizing people left and right. He was very confrontational. He would knock on the door. He would do the normal spiel, you know, the message of Jesus Christ. When they said no, he would put, the foot, his, put his foot in the door and say, do you want to go to hell? And, of course, they didn't. And then he would basically preach at them like a Baptist, fiery Southern Baptist preacher and get them to be baptized, but they never grew into a ward. There was one month where there were literally 40 baptisms, 40 baptisms in this branch. But when you went to church there, I was like, I got to check this out. I was, I was in a, a different ward at the time, but my family was still attending there. So I went to go and there were a couple of new faces. I was like, where, where are all the people? Well, they weren't sticking around because fear doesn't really work. But fear does work as an obstacle to try to keep us away from God. And I feel like that's what was happening here in these churches. When they're using fear, once that fear goes away, they're like, you know what? I'm not miserable. I, I don't think God is this evil. Then suddenly they're like, mm, I, I'm not really liking this Christianity stuff very much. And they put the bad taste in their mouth because they don't want to be afraid. Or on the flip side, like what... Our brother Matthew here says, you get to a point to where you feel like you're so bad. You've been told you're so wrong that you can't repent. You can't come to Christ. Either way, fear doesn't work for anyone except for Satan. God does not use fear to get us to do things. He uses love every time. One of the things that Matthew talks about in here is that there's this common idea, you know, I've heard this phrase where, where, I, where I live in the United States that, you know, leopards can't change their spots. But he points out that through Christ, we, everyone can change. We're not, he doesn't say this, but we're not leopards. It doesn't matter how many times you've sinned. It doesn't matter what you've done. There's only one sin that's considered unpardonable, and that's denying the Holy Ghost. And from what I understand, the only way to do that is to actually know beyond a shadow of a doubt, to have seen God and say, you know what? I fully understand the plan. I know for a fact that it's all real, 
uh, it's not for me. I want to share a scripture with you real quick. This is from Doctrines of the Saints, section 113, starting verse 28. Behold, the daughters and sons of perdition cannot repent. This is not because I am not a merciful God, but because it is against their nature to do so. That's where you can't repent. And it's not because the Lord won't let you return. It's because it's who you are. You are just perdition. These people, you know, Cain, Lilith, they're not like us. They, they, it's not that they don't have a path to redemption. It's that they openly reject it. So whatever you've done, whatever I've done, the Lord will forgive us and the Lord's waiting to forgive us. The Lord wants us to come back. Remember John 3.17. Jesus didn't come here to condemn us. He came here to save us. From the article again, there is not one sin that God cannot forgive. And if we truly desire to repent and change our hearts, then God will cleanse us no matter what we've done in the past. It doesn't matter if you're struggling with something. So I'm, I'm going to use alcoholism because that's, that's a really good example of something that you can get into and then your body takes over. The drug of alcohol takes over. And if any alcoholic will tell you, it's, or a drug or any other addiction, even gambling addiction, it's hard to stop. So let me ask you this. At what point does Alcoholics Anonymous give up on you and tell you you're not welcome back? At what point does Gamblers Anonymous tell you, hey, you're not welcome here. You can't come back. My understanding is that they don't. They know that people are going to fall off the wagon because we're fallible people. We're human. But just like the Lord, when we sin, these organizations are there to pick these brothers and sisters up and help them recover when they're ready. God doesn't focus on the bad things we've done. God focuses on the good in our hearts. The grace of Jesus Christ saves us from our sins and not in them. Anyone that's striving in repentance, that's enough. Yes, Jesus said, go and sin no more. But you know what? If that woman that was caught in adultery, although I always wonder why the man wasn't there too, or anyone else he said, go and sin no more too. If he ran into it again, I promise you, he would say the same thing. Go and sin no more. Because that's what a loving and forgiving God does. There's a difference between people saying, I'm going to do whatever I want, I don't care. And people saying, I am trying so hard not to do this. And grace can help us stop. And grace can make up the difference in our struggle. I don't believe in once saved, always saved, that, that theology. Not because that's not how God works. But because we can't just do whatever we want and think, hey, God's going to forgive me. It's, it's our hearts that make us once saved, always saved. If we lose that broken heart, that contrite spirit, that's when we, as Protestants call it, backslid, they call it backsliding, into this, the sinful life. Because we're rejecting the grace of Jesus Christ. One of my favorite quotes from the Latter-day Saint, the Brighamite side of the movement, is from Jay Golden Kimball, who said, The devil wants me, but I repent too damn fast. I love it because it's funny and because it's true. No, I, I don't think that at the end of our lives we can say a quick prayer and instantly be taken to God. But I do believe that if on our deathbed it suddenly hits us and we have the broken heart and we have the contrite spirit, then just like the thief on the cross, we will that day enter paradise. Because it's not about what we say. It's not even about what we do. It's about who we are to our core. We're finite beings. We were sent here knowing that we would mess up. And so when human beings and churches and, and Satan expect us to be perfect and give us a hard time when we're not, recognize that's not the Lord. 
We want to move forward in Christ, in the atonement, in his grace, seeking his will, not the approval of man. In the closing paragraph, Matthew says that God loves us unconditionally and eternally with a love that our human understanding will never completely comprehend. God is love and wants each and every one of us to be happy and find joy. So I want to tell you the same thing that he tells you in this article. If you hear a little voice in your head telling you that you're not good enough, that you're not there yet, that you're not worthy, that's not God talking. God inspires us to do better. He doesn't shame us. That's the devil. So my message to you, the Sabbath is, God loves you. God has a way and a plan for you. You are good enough. You are worthy. Don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about that voice putting you down in your head says. Know better. Know that God isn't waiting for some future version of you to love you. God loves you right now where you are. And he's asking you with his hand extended, please come home. That's my message, and I'll leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hope you enjoyed your sacrament with us today, and uh, we hope to see you during the week. We've got a lot on. Uh, we've got a prayer vigil for fossil fuels. Uh, no faith in fossil fuels about climate change on a Wednesday, on a Thursday at our church at Community of Christ. And then on Friday, we've got Bongo Bingo. A prayer night on a Thursday night. You'll see the link above or below. And I wish you a blessed sacrament day and Sabbath day. And we leave you with a prayer. Heavenly Father, guide us as we, we go through our day and week that we will we will have your spirit to be with us and we will be your hands and feet in our community. I say these things in your gift to us, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Have a pleasant weekend and blessed week, brothers Happy and sisters. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath.